this video, I am gonna give you 16 years of affiliate ownership in one shot. I've owned my affiliate for 16 years. I've made virtually every mistake in the book. So I'm gonna to try to condense all of those into this video to give those to you. And hopefully you can avoid making the mistakes that I've already made. So this is my gift to you as an affiliate owner. First up, weaknesses are where you win. Admittedly, this is not my idea. I learned this from Greg and what he outlined in the Hopper model. And if you guys remember that model, he's talking about, you know, we want to see certain things come out of the hopper and we don't want to see certain things come out of the hopper. And what he said in there was profound, which is you stand to gain more by diving headlong into your deficiencies than you do by spending any more time doing the things that you are good at. And I've learned that repeatedly over the course of my time as an affiliate ownership. Most of the massive mistakes, most of the largest pain points I've ever had in business are due to pure, unadulterated ignorance. So now I spend the vast majority of my time and what I would encourage you to do is find the things that you are bad at in the business. If you're bad at accounting, if you're bad at understanding copywriting, if you are bad at understanding how website design works, if you're bad at communicating, if you suck at leadership, all of those things is where you should start directing your time and energy because they are what will propel you to the next level. There are levels to everything and if you want to make it to the next level in any business whatsoever, we're going to have to figure out what we're weak at as entrepreneurs and fix that because when you get to the next level, there's going to be a whole new set of rules. There's going to be a whole new set of problems. And if you haven't fixed your deficiencies at the lower levels, you're going to fail continuously, hit that glass ceiling and continue to fall short on whatever your vision is. So work your weaknesses. Next up is do the boring work. One of the quotes that I've heard recently is the happiness that you seek lies in the work that you are avoiding. There are many things inside of affiliate ownership that are just not fun. Sitting behind the computer, doing spreadsheets, sending emails, trying to recraft a message to give to your staff and your team, coming up with strategic planning. None of that stuff is fun. It's not sexy. You're not going to see it on Instagram. But the boring work is where you make the largest strides. And if you can learn to master the boring work, that will put you ahead of 99% of other people. So learn to master the mundane, learn to live in the middle, learn to do the things that you don't like to do. And what I've learned about CrossFitters specifically is we're uniquely gifted at doing hard things if they're physical. And most of us are woefully deficient at doing hard things when they're mental only. So doing the boring work, do, like, teaching yourself a new skill, learning to get better at reading a PL, learning to do copy better. That's the boring work. That's the gymnastics work. If you're an athlete, that's the boring work that nobody really likes to do, but knows that there is huge payoff for doing those things. And every time I've learned to do the boring work is when I've had huge strides as a business owner, where I've had huge breakthroughs, when I've been able to solve a problem that I couldn't previously solve and learning to do the boring work is a skill that will serve you for a very long time. Okay, now in doing the boring work, this is what I had to learn the hard way, push, not pull. So all of the boring work involves a lot of administrative tasks, running reports, consolidating reports, aggregating information, trying to look and, de and decipher dashboards. And one of the concepts that I came up with years ago is this concept of push, not pull. A lot of times as an affiliate owner, it can feel like you're just doing nothing but pulling information and pulling communication and pulling feedback. And if you rethink that and you look at things through a lens of having them pushed to you, and that can be pushed to you via your team, it could be pushed through to you via automation or systems, but having something show up to you in the exact format that you want it, and then be able to push it back to either a CRM or software or even to another teammate with the action item that you want to happen at the end of that, that will make your life significantly easier. And what I spend a lot of time now doing is figuring out how can I have information pushed to me so that I can make a decision and then push it back to where it needs to go. Because all that does is speed up the feedback loop. It speeds up my ability to decipher and interpret information and it speeds up the action so that the information shows up to me and I can push it back and the end state is you know, a faster system, a happier client, uh, more co clear communication to my staff. But if I can get away from having to pull everything to me so I can simply make a decision and then have to figure out where it needs to go after that, 
everything starts to speed up. The feedback loop starts to speed up. The results that you're looking for start to speed up. Figure out how to get information pushed to you and then push it back where it needs to go. And then your job becomes just making decisions and creating the things that need to happen inside of the affiliate. Next up, simplicity scales, complexity fails. This is something that no matter how many businesses I've started, no matter how many things I've been doing, this one always holds true. In the early days of the affiliate, you start with something simple and you try to make everything more and more complex. You try to integrate conjugate training you want to do endurance training and then you want to make strength plus Metcon and then you want the newest and the fanciest marketing scheme and you're trying to make drip campaigns and all of that. All of that gets trumped by just running a class that is fun. Doing the simple things really, really well. Practicing this idea of virtuosity, doing the common uncommonly well. And no matter how big a business gets, simplicity is ultimately what will allow them to scale to the next level. Because the more complexity that we enter into any equation, the more likelihood we have for failure. And the affiliate is no different than anything else. And I've continued to learn that lesson over and over and over again. So when things start to get complex, I start to think about how can we make this simpler? How can we cut out steps? How can we remove different processes or even people from certain steps or processes in order to get to where we want to go? So don't overcomplicate things. Keep them simple and then just do them better. Which leads me to the next lesson. Eliminate friction. This is something that is at this point in my life, it's, it's like all I see. It's just I see friction everywhere. I see it in other people's businesses. I see it in my own business. I see it absolutely everywhere. And when we come to understand that friction is what stops most people from doing virtually anything, then we start to look at things through a different lens and we say, hey, if I can eliminate that friction, maybe I will do whatever that thing is or maybe that person will take an action. So eliminate friction. Learn to eliminate friction. Learn to look at workflows, learn to look at processes, learn to look at your classes, learn to look at your communication through the lens of, is there friction involved here? Is there something here that shouldn't be? And if we think about friction on something simple like a website, if there's too many steps for somebody to give you their information, they're just not going to give you their information. So I think of everything in this lens of friction, because when we remove friction, people tend to just go along. People tend to do whatever it is that they were looking at. So whether that's starting CrossFit or whether it's doing mobility, if we can remove the friction, we can remove a lot of the hard steps because we know that there's going to be challenges inside of that, we're more likely to get the outcome that we're looking for. So I'm constantly looking at, do we have processes that are full of friction? Is my staff doing things that are really complex and really hard? Can I remove those pieces of friction? Because at the end of the day, if I can remove friction, we're gonna get the outcome that we're looking for. Which leads into the next one, which is focus on the processes that matter. I read something recently that said growth is not a goal. Growth is an outcome that is a result of good processes and strategy. And I learned this a lot playing basketball and I've learned it in business and I've learned it in things like budgeting. The process is what matters. And a lot of times we get too focused on the outcome or the goal or the end state instead of just focusing on what the process is. When I wanted to play college basketball, the process was get a certain number of shots every single day, shoot 100 free throws every single morning before class starts. When I started to learn how to budget, it was do the five minutes of work every single morning to learn how to budget and make that a habit that I execute every single day. When I decided I wanted to learn to communicate with my staff, it was, hey, do some sort of reading every single day that would help me clarify how I'm communicating, whether it be how I communicate verbally or how I write. Because all of those things, if, if the desired outcome is to play college basketball or to have a sound budget or to have a team that executes the vision that I'm looking for, it's a process. I mean, there's no, there's going to be no magic pill involved with any of that. So focus on the process and not the outcome. And when you focus on the process, what it manifests itself in is habits and habits are how we get to goals at the end of the day, no matter what it is that you're doing. And you preach the same thing to people in your affiliate every single day, which is if you want to be fit and if you want better lean body mass, if you want better blood lipid profile, you need to show up every single day and you need to put in the work and you need to eat less shitty food and you need to do that on a more frequent basis. So focus on the process, not on the outcome.
Now, if you're focusing on the process, what will start to come to light to you is that time is the ultimate currency. It's the one thing that all of us want, and it's the one thing that we cannot get any more of. And when we think about outcomes or achieving goals or whatever it is that you're looking for, that becomes the million dollar question as an entrepreneur is like, what should I be spending my time and energy on? And if you think about it through that lens, you start to get really, really disciplined about your time because we only have a found amount of, you only have a finite amount of time in any given day. You've only got 24 hours. You've only got so many hours of a work day between the affiliate, between your family, between trying to keep your fitness up to whatever level it is that you're looking for. So time is the ultimate currency. And if that's the case, then I need to be spending my time on the right things. So whatever it is that you're driving, whatever it is that you've established as a pain point that's going to get you to the next level, if you want better average client value, if you want your coaches to be better, if you want longer length of engagement, you want better retention, you want to make more money, well, then when I wake up every morning, I need to look at what I'm doing throughout the day. I need to figure out, like, am I spending my free time or my allocated time on the things that are going to move the needle to get me to that thing? And if you're not, then my recommendation is just stop doing those other things and hyper focus on the one, maybe two things that are going to get you to your goal. Because at the end of the day, once that day is over, you don't get that day back. You have to move on to the next one. So every day we have one less day to get where we want to go because time is the ultimate currency. And if we're in the business of changing lives, we need to be a lot more disciplined about our time. If we're going to make the impact that we want, because we don't have as much time as we think. This kind of leads into this idea of the value for money. And a lot of times the mistake that we make just out of pure ignorance as kind of younger entrepreneurs, younger affiliate owners is thinking that what we're selling inside of the affiliate is time. We're selling, you know, X amount of classes for this much money. It's 12 classes a month for 160 bucks. And that's just fundamentally not what we're doing. We're in the value exchange business because what we're doing is changing people's lives. And if we think about exchanging value for money and understanding that people have had problems sometimes for a long time that they're trying to have solved and, and they might be under the understanding that, that they only have a finite amount of time to get those problems solved, then we understand the value for money proposition. And that makes everything a lot easier because if we hold what we do in high value, that gives us the confidence to be able to charge what we're worth so that we can continue to get better, continue to invest in our staff, continue to invest in ourselves, continue to invest in our businesses, and ultimately continue to drive more value so that we can have more impact, so that we can change more lives with this beautiful thing that we have it, that is the affiliate. And understanding that value for money proposition is something that took me a really, really long time to wrap my brain around and really value myself, the knowledge that I had, the, the, the time and energy that I was putting into it. And then ultimately being able to shift away from time for money into value for money is where I made a lot of progress as an affiliate owner and where the business improved significantly. So think value for money and not time for money. And when we're talking about serving our clients, understanding that trying to be everything to everybody means that you're going to be nothing to anybody. When you're a starving business, when you're early days of your affiliate, when you're open the doors and, and you just need somebody to walk in and purchase a membership from you, this can be so hard to wrap your brain around and understanding that at some point we have to make the shift. We have to understand there are certain people that I want to serve and there are certain people that I do not want to serve. And at first, if you just need to make money, unfortunately, you kind of have to serve everybody. You're going to have to deal with some of the, the turds and some of the people that are really just going to be a real pain in your ass. But as you start to progress, as things start to improve, you understand that you actually don't want everybody. I want to, I really want to narrow down who it is that I want to work with. And I want to define who those people are. I want to know what they do for a living, how they value their health and their fitness, how they value what it is that I do as a profession. And if you understand that, then that changes how you communicate with your staff. It changes how you communicate 
from a marketing standpoint, you can communicate more specifically to a, to a more specific audience. And then your life does nothing but get better because the day you walk into the affiliate and you can turn somebody away because you know that they're not going to be a good client is the day that you've made a significant shift as an affiliate owner and your life will be much better off because of it. Once you understand who it is that you serve, then what took me a long time to figure out, and I actually learned it much more uh, as I was kind of shifting when we started the podcast, when we started Best Hour of Their Day, one of the things that I started concentrating on quite a lot was storytelling. And this was a shift for me in, in understanding when you think about storytelling, you have to think about things like what would be the arc of a story for a successful client that might lose 100 pounds? You come to that realization that that story arc is not going to be a short one. For somebody who's going to go through a life-changing transformation like that, it's going to take some time. And that starts to shift how I look at what it is that I do. And I start to play the long game a bit more. And I start to think about what is the long-term success of the people that I'm working with? Because at the end of the day, I want to try to tell those stories because we're all human beings. Everybody likes a good story. Everybody likes a comeback story. Everybody likes the underdog. And we have the opportunity every single day to be a part of those stories inside of the affiliate. But I think sometimes what we miss in the hustle and bustle of the day is to tell those stories and realizing that those stories are really, really inspirational to a lot of people who are also looking to have a change inside of their lives. So understand everybody loves a good story and storytelling is part of our job inside of the affiliate. And that leads to the next one, which may be the most important one. Make the customer the hero. A lot of times as a business owner, as an affiliate owner, a lot of things that we do are things that are outwardly manifested as look at me, look at what we're doing, look at all the things that are happening in here. But if we shift and we say, hey, my job is to make the customer the hero, and more importantly, make them the hero of their own story. And I think looking at what we do through that lens and saying, It's not about me being the hero, because if it's about me, I can only impact one person. But if it's about them, I have the opportunity to impact every single person that I come in contact with. And I start to look at things through a customer service centric lens. And that's really important because we are in the relationship business. And if every day I walk into the affiliate with the whole goal of making them the hero, people are going to love what you do. They're going to come back. They're going to stay for a really long time. And ultimately, you're going to change a lot of lives. So make the customer the hero. Now, if you want to make the customer the hero, I think it's important to understand this, and this is probably going to be controversial. Retention is king and sales is queen. And that's not to downplay the role of sale. Everything in the affiliate starts with the sale. But when you understand that you're playing the retention game and the idea is to over deliver value, everything else is easier. Sales is easier because you'll get more referrals. You know, if you're into the metrics and you're looking at LTV to CAC ratio, understand that having a good ratio though ratio there is entirely predicated on having good retention. Um, yes, I want to bring my cost of acquisition down, but lifetime value of a client is predicated on them liking the service. And that means they have to love showing up every single day. And retention is king. And retention is not what we all thought it was. And many people still think it is you know, in the early days, which is this idea of like trying to get people to not quit. That's just a really terrible plan for retention. Optimal retention is playing the offensive version of retention is, is like, you know, giving your girlfriend flowers before you screw up, not after you screw up. That's, that's the, that's the better version of retention. Right. And we want to think about the affiliate the same way, which is making people love it so much that they would never even, even consider quitting. And when we think about running the affiliate, if I think about retention through that lens, I start to look at everything differently. I start to look at being proactive. I start to look at what would make somebody want to love coming in every single day. What are the series of actions that I need to facilitate? What conversations need to be had? What do I need to do when they hit, you know, a thousand workouts? What do I need to do with the programming? How do I need to train my coaches? All of that helps to drive retention sky high. And if you have great retention, sales is easy because everybody loves your product and they're going to tell you that they're going to tell other people about it. So understand that yes, sales is a huge component, 
you know, maybe they're 51, 49. And I don't know, even know if it's worth splitting hairs, but, but if you can't keep people after the sale, it doesn't matter. And if retention is the name of the game, understanding this one concept will change your whole life. Good customer service is the ultimate arbitrage. In a world where everybody wants to take a shortcut, everybody is lazy, everybody wants to automate every single thing that they do because AI is taking over the world, understand that human interaction is climbing rapidly up the hierarchy for things that value most, particularly in service-based industries. I'll give an example of customer service. There was a place here uh, that was a restaurant and the food was amazing. But for years, the service was off. It would take forever to get the food. It was always wrong. And we kept giving the place a shot over and over and over again. And finally, we just couldn't deal with it anymore. It didn't matter how good the food was. The fact that they couldn't get it out on time or they couldn't get it right never sat well with us. And ultimately, that restaurant went out of business. But this is also the same reason Chick-fil-A crushes. It's not because their food is so good. It's simply because they greet you with a smile and they say, my pleasure every single time. And they get you through the line really, really quickly. So understanding that in today's world of everybody being lazy and everybody wanting everything yesterday, your leg up against virtually everybody else you're going to compete with is going to be customer service. And that is the ultimate arbitrage. It is what people will fundamentally recognize as different about what you do versus what somebody else does. So don't necessarily put that text on, you know, autopilot so that it just fires out. Send the personal text, Send, you know, mail the personal card. That stuff goes so much further these days because now everybody understands that you can do it the easy way. 50 years ago, you had to write a letter. You had to put it in the mail. I don't have to now. And the fact that somebody does mail me a letter means a lot more now than it did even 15 years ago. So understand, customer service is the ultimate arbitrage. And speaking of arbitrage, lead metrics will trump lag metrics only always. A lot of times when you're new in business and you just don't know anything, the obvious metrics that you start tracking are what are designed what are described as lag metrics. Like what, how much revenue did I make last month? What was my average client value over the last six months? All of those things are important, but what's more important strategically is thinking about what would be the things that I would track that would with great confidence, give me those lag metrics. And this is what I've been spending a ton of time on, on over the last couple of years is trying to figure out and trying to interpret what are the best lead metrics that I can look at inside of the affiliate that would almost create a scenario where I, where I wouldn't even have to look at the lag metrics. I would just always be able to predict them and know what they were beforehand. If you can figure out what the best lead metrics are in any business, you will have a leg up on virtually everybody else in the industry. And in the CrossFit affiliate, you would want to look at what are the things that people are most excited about inside of the affiliate? What are the PRs? Are they having good attendance inside of that? Are they hitting certain milestones? Did they hit an anniversary? Did they have a birthday? These are all things that would be lead metrics. These are things that we can celebrate preemptively that if I'm doing that on a regular cadence, I know people are gonna stick around because people don't get celebrated like that in the regular world. So if I can track those things and I can make them the hero by knowing what those lead metrics are and then celebrating them at the point of the event, people are gonna love you forever. And speaking of people loving you forever, map out your customer journey. If you've been doing this for at least one year, with good confidence, you can map out when somebody would be likely to quit, when they would ask a certain question, when they're going to hit certain milestones. And for the longest time, I did not map that out and I did not intentionally manufacture those events, either right when they should happen or better yet, right before they would happen. If you've ever had a really, really high caliber experience in at a hotel or a restaurant or a resort or anything like that, this is what they do spectacularly. They know that when you walk into the restaurant and they greet you by name and they have your table ready and they know it's your anniversary and they know that it's your 14th anniversary, they know that you are wowed by that experience. And they're doing that intentionally, right? Because they, they understand that they have you at that restaurant for a finite amount of time and they wanna make sure that your experience inside of that finite amount of time is mapped out 
perfectly. And if you want to dive deep into this, read the book Unreasonable Hospitality, and he maps out customer experience and thinks about wowing people better than virtually anybody else I've ever read. So it is a fantastic read, but think about what your customer journey is and map it out, map out, map it out exactly to what you would want it to be pre-populate and plan those events so that you can make a really big deal out of them. Because if you can do that, it's going to be more memorable for them. And if it's more memorable for them, they're going to stay there for a long time because they, they associate happiness and success with being at the affiliate. Spend some time mapping out the customer journey. And when you're doing things like mapping out the customer journey, you tend to start thinking in longer time domains. And that means play the long game. And for the longest time, when you're a starving entrepreneur, all you can think about is the next meal. All you can think about is the next person that signs up. All you can think about is, is that rent check going to cash when I give it to the landlord? You think so short term because you're just starving as an entrepreneur and that can be really, really hard. But at some point you have to start thinking about the long game. Every short term tactic that I've ever tried in 16 years of an affiliate owner has failed. 100% of them have all failed. Start thinking about not necessarily what's going to happen this month, but what do you want to happen 12 months from now? What do you want to happen 24 months from now? Because if I know what those goals are, I can reverse engineer what I should be doing today that would make myself 12, 24 months from now thank me for what I started doing today. Now, if you're playing the long game, that ultimately means that I have to understand what game I am actually playing. And this is something that some people never actually figure out inside of businesses, like what game are we actually playing? And a lot of people think we're in the fitness game. You're actually in the results game. If you wanted to be even more specific, how do we get people results? Well, we have to make stables of really great coaches, but fundamentally you have to figure out what game it is that you are playing as an affiliate owner, because until you know what game you're playing, you really can't do anything super effectively. If, if I was running around on a football field trying to play basketball, I'm not gonna be super effective at that because I fundamentally have no idea what game it is that I am playing. Spend some time trying to figure out, what game am I in personally as an affiliate owner? What, what problems am I trying to solve? What, what, are the, what are the people that I'm trying to interact with and figure out what game it is that you are playing because you will see no success in you, until you understand what game it is that you are playing. I believe the game that we are playing is be a center for excellence. And if we think about being the best professional you possibly can be, most of my major woes as an early affiliate owner and most of the things that we help people with inside of Best Hour all center around people problems and, and people's inability or lack of understanding or just complete negligence with regard to developing their staff. And I believe that we are in the center for excellence game. Our job is to create the best coaches in the world because everything is facilitated through them. I can only do so much as, in, as, as one person, but if I can create the best possible coaches who have the most information, who have the highest levels of empathy, who understand how customer service is supposed to be executed, and I can get them really good at all of those things, then we have the best shot at succeeding regardless of what anybody else has going on in the market. If you have the best people giving the best results at the end of the day, no marketing strategy for the most part is going to be able to beat you out of any given market because at the end of the day, people are buying a result. And if you can't give them the result and you can't give it in a timely fashion or it's not given to them in a pleasurable experience, nobody cares. And if we start to shift and understand like, yes, we need to understand what game we are playing and that game is providing a center where we develop people as professionals, you can win forever. Which leads to the next one, which is be an expert by being an expert. A lot of times we think that faking it till we make it is going to get us where we want to go. When the reality is there is no way to be an expert at anything other than just putting the 10,000 hours into the craft writing the 5,000 lesson plans, sending the 3,000 emails, saying the same thing over and over and over in an empty room until you find the exact cadence of the words and the, and the exact tone shift and when you're going to say what and all of those things. All of that stuff comes by just doing the reps. 
The only way to be an expert is to actually be an expert. And if you're not actually an expert, eventually you're going to be found out. And eventually somebody is going to figure out that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And that's one of the most frightening things ever as a professional. And the only way to avoid that is to put in the work, put in the 10,000 hours, understand that's going to take a lot, a lot of time. And then ultimately what you will have the opportunity to do is if you are actually an expert is you will be able to transfer that information to another individual so that they have the opportunity to be an expert. So don't try to skip the middle because the middle is where the magic happens. And if you want to actually be an expert, you have to understand that you have to go through the middle from being terrible to being okay, to being good, to being pretty good, to being great, to being somebody that people ask for help. And if we're talking about being an expert, we're going to talk about expert in any field as a pro and pros plan, amateurs react. So think about what you're doing. Think about how you operate as a business and think about, am I just reacting to everything that is coming into my office? Am I just reacting to everything that's on the floor? Because when you watch a really good class, the coach is not reacting to anything. They are manipulating every single interaction that happens on the floor. They are making sure that that scaling option over there is happening the way that it should be. They're making sure that that person is moving at the exact right pace. They're making sure that the class is moving the way they want them to from A to B. None of it is by accident. None of it is reactive. And the same thing for people that are just masters at business. They're not reacting to the market. They've got a plan. They've got a strategy. They're looking at things in 3D space and they're saying, I want this to move from there to there and this is how I'm going to make it happen. And then ultimately the market reacts to them in a lot of scenarios. And that's ultimately what's going to establish the difference between somebody who's a novice and between somebody who's a pro. Learn to plan ahead. Learn to stop reacting to everything. That's ultimately the path to becoming one of the best professionals in any industry. And this one's important to me because what I've learned after 16 years in an affiliate and seeing a lot happen in the space over those 16 years is that the group model prevails. There's been so many things and ideas that have come through the door and said, Hey, this doesn't work. This isn't going to be effective. But if we, even if we look at other industries that are popping up, we look at the Zumba's, the Jazzercise, even F45, like those are all predicated on the group model. If you look at things like Zoom and Jazzercise, they've been around for 30, 40 years. The group model prevails and ultimately is because like people at their core are pack animals. We like to be around other people. Preferably, we like to be around people that we like. And if you can create a culture of people that are like-minded individuals that value the same things, the group model is so powerful. And I think if we lean into that instead of shying away from it because it does have a little bit of complexity and it does present different problem sets, we understand that that model, whether in CrossFit or in some other model, is going to prevail. So don't shy away from the group model. It's going to last. It's highly effective. And it's ultimately what we all fell in love with in the first place. And the last one I'm going to leave you with is this. Nobody owes you anything. There are certain instances as an entrepreneur, you can do absolutely everything right. You can do it by the book. You can execute it exactly as it was laid out. You can cross the T's and you can dot the I's and you can hit all the timelines in the world and it still might not work out. And ultimately, if you understand that nobody owes us anything, nothing is guaranteed. And that the only thing that really means that I'm winning is that I'm here tomorrow to keep playing. When you start thinking about that, you get out of the, the victim mindset and things don't happen to you. Things just happen and you don't take offense to them because if you think that you're owed something and it doesn't work out for you, you think somebody has a vendetta out for you or is something somebody wronged you in some way, shape or form. But sometimes it's just life. Sometimes it's just the way business shakes out and you'd be much better off as a business owner, as a leader, as a person to understand that like nobody owes you anything. Success is never permanent. Rent is due every single day. If you show up like that every single day, the one thing that you can guarantee yourself is that you'll continue to get better. I hope this stuff has helped. This is my gift to you guys. That's 16 years of affiliate ownership. I hope it helps and I'll see you guys soon.